test. His first proposition is, there exists a mutual influence between the heavenly bodies, the earth, and living bodies. That is what he calls his first proposition. The second is the extension of this to the field with which we are concerned. A fluid, universally diffused and continued, so as to admit no vacuum, whose subtility is beyond all comparison, and which, from its nature, is capable of receiving, propagating, and communicating all of the impressions of motion is the medium of this influence. Now, these are his two basic uh, propositions or hypotheses. He follows, as we have said, the concept of Paracelsus and the Arabs, that what we call the atmosphere or the intervals between planets and suns on luminaries, that this entire area is filled with a mysterious fluidic substance. This, perhaps, is the famous ocean of Thales, upon which he believed the earth floated. And according to him, earthquakes were caused by someone rocking the boat. Now, this might again be closer to the truth than we know if we consider this field of magnetic energy motion. It is already suspected that seismic upheavals may be due to electric or magnetic causes. This also may be the mysterious sea described by Heraclitus who declared that souls coming into generation first passed into a strange, humid uh, substance, moist but invisible, which enclosed the earth, and which, to a measure at least, communicated itself to the earth through the precipitation of rain. Uh, this humidity, carried by water, was, however, separate from and superior to the fluid in which it was carried. Socrates described water as consisting of a mass of minute, solid, dry units, and that the flowing of water was the falling of these units over each other in an endless concatenation. All of these speculations carry us likewise to the belief that the sun was the principal source and regulator of the magnetic fields of the solar system, and that by extension, all energy or magnetic motion arose from the sun, and that its alternation, variation, polarization, fluxes, and influxes were due to motions, tides, or various changes upon the sun or within the construction thereof. We would be inclined to go a little way along this road in, recognition, in recognizing the effect of sunspots, which would represent, therefore, some change upon the surface of the sun. Uh, which produced marked modification on the earth and among the creatures that inhabit the earth. When we know that sunspot maxima are carefully and eternally noted in the rings of trees, we can also realize that this phenomena does have certain terrestrial significance. Mesmer then went with Paracelsus to the theory that as all forms in nature exist within this humidic magnetic field, that all these forms likewise have a magnetism of their own, have their own magnetic fields, which are subservient to that of the earth and the sun. 
and also are subject to a certain modified negative influence from that solar light which is reflected from the surface of the moon, which forms a different kind of magnetic energy. That the human body should be thus supported by a magnetic field was evidently known to peoples also in the past. Many individuals have existed who possess some degree of native psychism, who have a measure of vision beyond that of the more conservative human. Uh, these have recorded continuously through the centuries the appearance of a light, vapor, or field of energy surrounding the human body, which has come in mysticism to be called an aura but which might just as easily be regarded as a magnetic field. Under certain conditions, almost anyone can to a degree perceive this aura or can become aware and sensitive to its existence. And it is quite possible that this magnetic field is very important as a possible means of communication between man and other forms of life in nature, which communication up to the present time has been considered impossible. The magnetic field of the human body, as St. Thomas Aquinas uh, pointed out, possibly basing his researches upon those of his teacher, Albertus Magnus, uh, these fields in the body were subject to tides were subject to motions of one kind or another. Albertus Magnus pointed out that the fluids in the brain were controlled also tidally by the motion of the moon. Thus it is conceivable that at least three, probably more, types of pull or push pressures may be found operating upon magnetism. One of these, of course, is the sun which in its motion and in its various internal mutations uh, certainly affects magnetism, affects the earth in many ways, and it is probably the magnetic field rather than the actual light which is responsible for the phenomenon of the seasons. There is also a mutation or influence resulting from the refract a reflection of light from the sun on the surface of the moon and its final uh, descent to the earth. This type of magnetism has been noted to be noxious and according to old magicians was used by sorcerers in the attainment of their diabolical ends. The third type of influence might arise directly from the earth itself which has its own internal motions and mutations and is subject, like all other living creatures, to gradual alternation of magnetic polarity. Thus we today recognize the two poles of the Earth, one geographic and the other magnetic. The uh, magnetic field of the Earth has been considered to some degree. We are not entirely unaware of it, nor have we forgotten what the Chinese learned when they experimented with the compass. We know that magnetic currents of some kind do exist, but for some reason we have never directly attempted to apply them to therapy, except in the case of a few extraordinary and regarded as deranged researchers. The magnetic field of the body itself may therefore be similarly described as that of the sun, namely that it is a fluidic material, fluidic to our comprehension, but probably not fluidic in its own nature. It gives the impression of a fluid, but it is far more subtle than any fluid that we know. I think Mesmer termed it fluidic because he perceived within the substance of it certain tidal motions, certain ebbing and flowing, which we associate 
with a liquid of some kind. But it might just as well be associated with these magnetic patterns which seem to lie beneath the surface of frost pictures on a window pane. Mesmer was convinced that this magnetic material formed not only a natural field around man, but was to large measure the basis of a certain protection. In other words, a person in whom the magnetic field was strong and was normally sustained apparently had greater resistance against uh, the dangers of infection or many ailments which might otherwise afflict us. The um, reference to contagion and infection uh, is rather important. We must assume that all forms of bacterial life regardless of their size or structure, are also magnetic units. This does not mean they have no other existence, but it does mean that anything that exists does possess magnetism as a means not only of its existence, but of its animation. Thus also, infection may be said to have a magnetic existence. And the corruption of flesh is a magnetic process, just as surely as we might regard it as the result of poisoning, blood poisoning, or something of that nature. If, therefore, a person's magnetic field be strong, it is quite conceivable that it would repel the magnetic fields of bacterial organisms, causing some degree of immunity, if not complete immunity. And there are numerous records which cannot be explained of persons immune to ailments who may even be carriers of those ailments but will not be affected by them. 